Greetings. It is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. Give me Bitcoin. I am here with some CLSology for you. Over on the YouTube, the tube of views, on one of my videos, there's a little discussion going on between some ANCAPs, and somebody brought up seasteading. This goes in the category of, yeah, I've been going to do a podcast about this for the last 70,000 fucking years, and I never get around to it because we all know how I am. I do want to do an extended podcast on this and develop this idea because it's really important, and it goes beyond seasteading, and that's so there's, there's a whole giant narrative here that I think ANCAPs need to be aware of. I just want to throw this out about seasteading and explain why seasteading is not a viable option. Here's the thing. All right, so first of all, for those of you like, what the fuck is seasteading? Seasteading is the concept, and I'm going to address some objections to seasteading in the process of this, so just flow with me. Seasteading is the idea that you go out in the ocean, which is you know the international waters, which is not owned by a state yet, and you essentially build a giant houseboat. You build a floating city. There are assorted techniques that have been put forth for doing this, blah, blah, blah. You could also include in seasteading building your city under the water. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't count either. And, of course, the objection that the statist have, the first objection statist put forth is, well, but what would you do when there's a storm? There, it would get flipped over, it would sink, whatever. Because, of course, yes, we don't have enough technology to build something that floats on the water and can handle storms, which is not true, but it is what it is. We'll put aside technological concerns. The biggest actual practical barrier to seasteading would, of course, be the cost, because to build it, you would have to go through all sorts of government regulations and yada, yada, yada to build the thing because, at least initially, because you'd have to build it someplace in a dockyard or something which is controlled by a state, so there'd be shit tons of taxes and regulations and you have to have wheelchair ramps and all this other shit. So there's a lot of logistical problems in creating a seastead. But the concept of simply building a city out in the ocean is philosophically sound. The other objection, of course, is the stupid people will say, but there's no way a seastead could, could work because what would anybody do for a job out there? Some odd years ago, and seasteading has gone through a couple of rises and fluxes in its popularity among libertarians and anarcho-capitalists. Some odd years ago, I remember somebody somebody started another seasteading website and their thing was going to be they were going to build, build the seastead off the coast of the United States, whatever it is, three miles out, five miles out, seven miles out, whatever, just outside the international waters. And of course, the statists said, well, but wh why would anybody go there? How would you make any money? You know, it's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. Okay, if you're sitting around and you're thinking, could seasteading function? You know, how would, because, oh, so you're on a seastead. Until it gets large enough, you can't really grow your own crops. You're going to need to import a lot of stuff. All right, well, where's money going to come from to import all this stuff? Unless, you know, this is being financed by Bill Gates or something. But trying to keep it realistic, it would, it would essentially be like a startup business. You'd have to get out there, build it, and then you'd have to make some kind of profit, at least initially, in order to continue building it and import the things you need. So where would this money come from? I'm going to answer two questions. How would capital flow into a seastead and why seasteading will ultimately fail, why it's not viable. 
All right, imagine if you will that three, five, seven miles, whatever it is, off the east coast of the United States is a seastead. And now let's, I need to define some terms so that this really impacts you. On this seastead, homosexual marriage, for example, is not illegal. Homosexual marriage is also not legal. Because remember, as I've said before, when any, whenever anything is legalized, what that means is you have permission from the slave masters to engage in the legal activity and the legal activity is regulated. So when homosexuals say we want legalized marriage, what they mean is we want permission from the government to get married and we want the government to continue regulating marriage because we want to make sure those nasty little Mormons don't have more than one wife. Whenever somebody says we want to legalize marijuana, like it is here in Colorado, what that means is that it's not a fucking free-for-all on marijuana. They're, they believe it or those people who are not from Colorado think that you know everybody in Colorado is now growing marijuana in their backyard and we're all high. There's not a fucking free-for-all on marijuana. Marijuana is legal. That means it is regulated by the government and you have to have permission to smoke it. Okay. So understand this. On the seastead, homosexual marriage is not illegal and it's not legal. You may simply go to the seastead and marry or not marry and live with anyone you like as long as they consent. Nothing at the seastead is legal. You may go to the seastead and you may buy or sell any drug you like. You may go there. You may buy or sell any food. You may buy or sell any computer software. You may buy or sell any beverage. You can conduct any type of scientific research. You can have any medical procedure performed from DNA gene therapy to abortion. You can perform any medical procedure. You can perform any scientific experiment. You can gamble any amount of any type of currency on any game of chance or sporting event that you desire. You can say anything you like. You can film anything you like. You can have sex with any consenting person that you like. You can exchange anything for anything. You can exchange any type of currency for any type of beverage, for any type of food, for any type of sex, for any type of computer software. None of these things are legal or illegal. You may simply go there and do them. Now, just try to, for those of you who are not ANCAPs, just try to open your tiny little fucking stupid brain and just envision a place where you can do whatever you want as long as you respect property rights and don't violate the non-aggression principle. And of course, you can possess any weapon, any sidearm, any rifle, any machine gun. Well, who, who would protect everybody? You would need police. Yes, of course you would. On a seastead where everybody's walking around with a pistol. Why, how would anybody possibly be protected without police? God, you people are so fucking stupid.
how long do you think it would take for a huge amount of the capital, the fiat money, the gold, the Bitcoin, the whatever, in the continental United States to be transferred to the seastead? People in the United States would flock to this place. There would be a fucking waiting line. Just for gambling alone, probably. If you can get a seastead started, Sally Sells started seasteads by the seashore. Ooh, if you can get a seastead started. <laughs> there it is. The anarcho capitalist vocal warm up. Seastead started. Whew. If you can get a seastead started, the amount of money that will flow in will be staggering. You won't be able to count it all. You'll have to hire somebody just to count the money. And this is why seasteading cannot work. It can't work. Look at the economy, and I use the term economy very loosely, of the United States right now. Look how fucked up it is. Now, imagine a huge transfer of actual wealth. Because remember, you go to the seastead with your dollar bill, they're going to laugh at you. The seastead is going to take gold. They're going to take platinum. They're going to take bartering of useful items. They're going to take Bitcoin. They're not going to take fiat currency. Unless they want to. I mean, if you, if you, if you want to take fiat currency in the seastead, of course. There will be a huge transfer of wealth from the continental United States to the seastead. You think the economy is fucked up now. You wait until the Bitcoin and the gold and the platinum and whatever else people find of value, wait until it starts flowing to the ocean. The government of the United States and the corporations will unite to create a propaganda campaign explaining why the seastead is a threat to the United States. They will enlist the poor people because, of course, the poor people will not have access to the seastead because they can't get out there. And they will be told how this is a playground for the rich people and how this is destroying the economy, which will be true. It will destroy the economy. It will. The presence of a seastead off the continental United States will destroy the economy of this country. I mean, again, you think the economy is wrecked now. You have seen nothing until one-fifth of the actual wealth of this country transfers to the ocean. A seastead will destroy the economy of the continental United States. The government and the corporations will manipulate the poor people, and it won't take much effort, into wanting the seastead to be made illegal. Therefore, democracy, thus will, with the majority, the poor people saying, we want the seastead illegal, this will give the government all the support it needs. Step number one will be to make travel to the seastead illegal, just like it's illegal to go to Cuba. Is it still illegal? I can't remember. It seems like maybe somebody lifted the ban some time ago. I could, I just, I don't remember. I don't know. At one time, you could not travel to Cuba. It was illegal for an American citizen. It was illegal if you were the property of the, remember, you own your own body. Oh yes, you stupid fucking statist out there. You own your own body. But if your body goes to the country of Cuba, the government of the United States will put you in a cage because you own your own body and you're free. Fucking stupid morons. They will first, step number one, they will make it illegal for citizens of the United States to travel to the seastead. 
Step number two, they will put, when that doesn't work, because it won't, again, you can go there and do anything you want, right? Drugs, uh, medical procedures, science, gambling, research, computer software, sex, anything you want. You can make it illegal to go there all you want. It's not going to stop people. Step number two will be a naval blockade. The Navy will surround the seastead. They will not let any ships in in an attempt to starve the seastead out, to force the seastead to make laws against whatever behavior the government of the United States does not approve of. And of course, step number three will be declaring war and sinking the seastead. They will find a reason. It will not be hard. There will be whatever weapons of mass destruction or the, some president will get a blowjob and so they'll shoot a cruise missile at an aspirin factory on the seastead, whatever. They're, they will find a reason. It is not hard. The, the United States government has never had a hard time manufacturing false reasons to kill people. And I'm pretty fucking sure they can come up with one. So this is why seasteading will not work. It is, it's just not a viable option in the long run for creating libertarian paradise because it will be such a threat. It, it's not even a threat. It's, not, it's To call it a threat, it will destroy the economy of the United States. This is, it's not a threat. It's a fucking fact. It's like if I, pour, if I jump in the swimming pool and the swimming pool is full of water, I will get wet and I'm naked. Okay, well, you jumped in the swimming pool, but he's in a giant bubble. Ha, ha, ha. There's an exception to the rule. All right. If I am naked and I jump in a swimming pool full of water, I will get wet. That is a fucking fact. If somebody successfully starts a seastead off the coast of the United States, it will destroy what is left of the economy, of the legal fiction known as the United States. It will destroy it. And therefore, I guarantee you, if a seastead ever starts, the end result will be naval blockade and either the seastead making the laws the government of the United States tells it to make or the seastead will be destroyed. Those are the only two options in the long run for seasteading. Now, short term, you know, if you could build one, get in there, get things started, make a profit, and then get the fuck out before the Navy comes to kill you. Yes, a short-term option, definitely viable. Long-term option, seasteading is not going to work. And when I finally get around to doing a longer podcast about this, I'll talk about seasteading perhaps in a little more depth and also talk about what I see as the actual solution.